brother and I have been close since we were kids. Even after we became adults, until he got married, we often spent our weekends together. Six years passed since he got married. One day, when I assumed he was living happily, I received a shocking message from him. I'm being accused of an affair I know nothing about, and they're demanding compensation in the divorce court. It seemed that my sincere and earnest brother was being sued by his sister-in-law. I immediately headed to my brother's house. My name is Ava. I'm a 31-year-old woman working as a lawyer. After graduating from law school, I became a lawyer and now work at a prominent firm. I always struggled with studies, so it wasn't an easy journey to get where I am today. Still, I became a lawyer and now live a busy but fulfilling life. Of course, every day is a day of learning, and I think it'll always be. But I have a unique hobby, gaming. I'm what you call a gamer, and when I have time, I play online games with my brother, also a gamer. That's me, well, my brother, who's five years older, supported me during my college admissions and bar exams. We're still very close. I was forming my career as a lawyer while enjoying games with Samuel. But since he got married last year, we played less frequently. One relaxed weekend at home, Samuel called. Hey, do you have a moment? I need some advice. It was unusual for reliable Samuel to ask for guidance. Though surprised, I listened closely. Lately, my wife been acting strange. He's out often and sometimes doesn't come home at night. I hope I am just overthinking. Samuel began talking about his wife. Charlotte? He said she often wasn't home when he returned from work and sometimes didn't come home at all without notice. I only met Charlotte at their wedding, so I don't know her well. But from our few meetings, she seemed friendly, so I was taken aback. It's not inherently wrong to stay out late or go out, but if it happens too often, it's concerning. If there are relationship issues or infidelity, something has to be done. That's why Samuel consulted me. That's why Samuel consulted me, being a lawyer, about potential solutions. However, from a legal perspective, you can't do anything without evidence. Moreover, involving a lawyer isn't the most peaceful solution, especially without any proof against his wife. Since I didn't have a clear picture of the situation, I decided not to intervene just yet. Right now, there was little I could do. However, if Samuel was truly concerned, I thought it might be best for him to look into it. So, I suggested he hires a detective. A detective, Hotshire Weber? A Samuel Muse? That's an option. I this work. I'm swamped with work, so I can't investigate it myself. I think you all think it over. Samuel's response was non-committal. Regardless, I sent the detective agency's details to Samuel's computer. Samuel replied with a sigh and ended the call. His demeanor was notably downcast. The situation seemed even graver than I initially thought. Days turned into weeks, and Samuel neither contacted the detective nor reached out to me. Was he too busy or had things settled down with Charlotte? And surely, I decided to check in with him. Samuel, how have you been? Any updates on the situation with Charlotte? It seems you haven't engaged the detective. I genuinely hoped Samuel's concerns were unfounded. However, from his tone, it was evident that things weren't great. Despite feeling helpless, Charlotte's behavior hasn't changed, and it seems he's been living with anxiety for several months. I get it. Hiring a detective can be pretty expensive. Hearing Samuel's disheartened voice made me feel heavy-hearted as well. All right, I'll help out. Let me see what I can do from here. So don't be too down. Samuel? I owed him back. I thought of this as an opportunity to repay a favor and told Samuel so. I wanted to alleviate Samuel's worries, even if just a little. I asked Samuel to wait for a bit and ended the call for the day. A few weeks later, I stumbled upon some unsettling information about Charlotte. Before I could share it with Samuel, he called, sounding more frantic than ever. Is everything okay? Something's come up, he blurted out. I braced myself for what Samuel would reveal next. As Charlotte is threatening to sue me for alimony based on false allegations of infidelity. Gee. Which even has a lawyer demanding compensation for our pending divorce, claiming they'll proceed legally if I don't pay. It sounded like Samuel had been ambushed by Charlotte and her lawyer with unexpected demands. He explained that he had secretly called me during a break from their intense discussion. By hearing this, I was at a loss for words. 
I knew Samuel wasn't the type to cheat. Samuel himself probably has no idea at all. That's why he's saying it's fabricated. So, Charlotte is claiming compensation in the divorce trial based on a non-existent affair story about Samuel. Samuel is genuinely a good person who is kind to everyone. Having seen many victims of scams and frauds at work, I was always worried about good-hearted Samuel. I often wondered if he might someday be deceived. But I never imagined this deception would come from his own spouse. So, what's the situation? What's the other side saying? I mean, Samuel isn't having an affair, so this claim seems far-fetched. Given that he'd received a call in the middle of our conversation, it was uncertain when Samuel might be taken back. I needed to learn as much as possible about Samuel's situation in this brief time. So, I quickly pressed Samuel for details. He shared that someone had snapped a photo of him during a business meeting with a female colleague, and now they were using it as proof of an affair. In the photo, both of them were dressed professionally, and the location wasn't suggestive in any way. It was clear they were forcibly trying to frame it as evidence of infidelity. There were a few things that struck me as odd at this point. There were a few things that struck me as odd at this point, specifically the approach of the opposing lawyer. A lawyer is a professional, after all. They wouldn't do anything to harm their client's interests. If it's a case of infidelity, they'll do their utmost to reduce the compensation amount in a divorce trial if their client is the one having the affair. If their client is the victim, the lawyer's job is to claim the maximum compensation. But demanding compensation based on such flimsy evidence was highly suspicious. If they truly studied law, then they're a truly terrible lawyer. If such unreasonable demands were met, anyone could make wild compensation claims. There is no need to accept such an absurd request. As a family, I couldn't stand by and do nothing. Samuel, I'm coming over right now. Don't answer anything they say until I get there. Just stay put and wait for me. I decided to step in as Samuel's lawyer and talk to Charlotte and her lawyer. From lounging in my casual clothes, I quickly changed into my suit, shifting into work mode. I called a taxi and headed to Samuel's house as fast as I could. Right upon arrival, I took a deep breath and rang the doorbell. It was Samuel who answered, and he welcomed me inside, heading to the living room. I found Charlotte sitting next to an unfamiliar man. This man seemed to be Charlotte's attorney. Both of them looked at me in surprise. Sister-in-law, it's been a while. I greeted Charlotte briefly and then introduced myself to the man beside her. I'm Ava, an attorney. I'm here today representing Samuel. At my words, both Charlotte and her attorney looked shocked. What? Ava, a lawyer. You're choking, right? Charlotte mumbled, exchanging a quick glance with the man beside her. It's understandable that she was taken aback. She had no idea that I practiced law. I have been approached for free consultations and mentioned behind my back, leading to past troubles. As a result, I seldom share my profession with anyone other than close friends and family. Of course, that includes relatives too. Samuel understood my sentiments, so he never mentioned my job to Charlotte. That's probably why she was so surprised to see me step in as a lawyer. Charlotte controlled Samuel's income. He wouldn't have the means to hire a lawyer under normal circumstances. Perhaps she thought Samuel would be defenseless and took this opportunity to make her claims. Silently seated were Charlotte and her attorney. As I was pondering the next move, Charlotte's supposed lawyer spoke up. I don't care if you're a lawyer or not. <laughs> Rash rations. Your brother cheated. We should obviously pay compensation, right? Beside him. Charlotte nodded in agreement. Did they genuinely believe they could win compensation in a divorce case with that? What do you have as evidence of this alleged affair? Well, I can never believe any tales of Samuel's infidelity. The two kept insisting even after I arrived, wondering if they had any additional evidence beyond what Samuel shared with me. I pressed the opposing lawyer. He's having dinner with another woman. That's solid proof. I'm not... I'd say we'll let it slide for $50,000. Their plot news terrorist. The Emma want this getting out to family or his workplace, would you? The man's words could be construed as a threat. I almost chuckled. Demanding $50,000 based on such a flimsy accusation. Doesn't he realize how ridiculous he sounds? His bold claims only made me want to laugh more. By this point, my suspicions were nearly confirmed. That this attorney might just be a fake. Despite being a so-called attorney, 
kid and played what seemed like threats against Samuel, something that had caught my attention from the start. I initially thought he might just be a corrupt lawyer, but even with a genuine attorney like me present, he kept making statements no real lawyer would utter. Claiming $50,000 compensation based on a mere public meeting is absurd. Just being in a suit, in broad daylight, in a public place doesn't prove infidelity. To prove adultery, there needs to be direct evidence of actual misconduct. Any attorney would know this. It's a fundamental aspect of the law. If he doesn't even know this, something's off. I understand your concerns. I began, but we can't just agree to the payment. Sir, could you provide your attorney license number and your full name? If you could also provide the name of your firm. I'll get in touch to set up another meeting. I pressed the opposing lawyer for his credentials. As expected, he began to falter. I can't quite remember my license number right now. Just say the Jewish. I must have forgotten. I'm the... Please contact my white wife for strip appointment mess for appointment or it will ever say... Forgetting one's own attorney license number? That's unimaginable for a real attorney. It's clear he's trying to deflect and quickly exit the situation. You can't say it, can you? Because you're not a real lawyer. I hit the nail on the head. I thought he would admit it now, but he defiantly countered. What are you wait talking about? I just said to become our tobacco. I could feel you a bit your defamation. I if he could, I wished he would. I couldn't help but burst out laughing. If you're genuine, then tell me. A trustworthy attorney wouldn't hide their identity. And a real attorney wouldn't threaten to sue over such a minor issue. I replied with a smirk, leaving him speechless. The table seemed to have turned. Both the Charlotte and the imposter attorney looked defeated. Now, the ball was in my court. Mr. Fake Attorney, aren't you actually Logan's sister-in-law's former classmate? You work in sales, don't you? Hearing this, the two of them looked up in shock. Samuel, who had been quietly watching the exchange beside me, looked at me in surprise. You're not an attorney. Your sister-in-law's affair partner? It wasn't Samuel having the affair. It was you two, wasn't it? Am I right, Charlotte? Everyone in the room was taken aback by my revelations. And the sudden appearance of an attorney who knew everything must have been startling. I had been consulted by Samuel, and after learning he couldn't afford to investigate, I took matters into my own hands. I couldn't stand seeing Samuel so distressed. An investigation revealed Charlotte's affair. When I arrived at the house and saw Charlotte with the man next door, I was equally taken aback. Turns out, the man who claimed to be Charlotte's lawyer was actually her affair partner. I had done my homework. I let them know I had plenty of evidence of Charlotte's affair and reminded them that Charlotte and her partner would be the ones paying compensation. So, are you still planning to claim compensation from Samuel? Upon hearing my question, both Charlotte and Logan silently shook their heads. I'm so sorry. I never meant for any of this to happen. Please forgive me. Perhaps realizing she would be the one paying. Charlotte's tone shifted to remorseful and apologetic. Logan, seeing Charlotte's demeanor, gave a slight nod of his head. Charlotte then began to talk about the fake affair. It seemed Logan had expressed his wish to marry her, and she had felt the same way. They decided to fabricate an affair to push for the divorce. The idea of also getting compensation money seemed like a good plan to her. It baffles me how someone could think, let alone execute, such a plan. Then Samuel, who had been silent till now, spoke up. He betrays someone and try to frame them with a crime. Shh. Do you think just saying so you will settle it? I've always trusted you as my wife, so be prepared for the consequences of what you have trampled upon. What's your word? What do you have trampled upon? Samuel spoke calmly, but with palpable anger towards Charlotte. He was right. A mere apology can't make up for such deceit. You might not be aware, but claiming to be a lawyer without a license is a serious crime. You could face jail time or a hefty fine. And Logan, you're implicated too. There's no escaping this. Upon hearing this, both of their faces turned pale. It seemed they hadn't anticipated the gravity of the situation. Charlotte, in a frantic tone, said, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I didn't know. I truly apologize. Logan quickly stood up from his chair and also began to deeply apologize. I'm truly sorry. We didn't think it through. Oh, please forgive us. Their fervent apologies were a stark contrast to their earlier demands. It was a foolish display. 
I don't care what happens to you two. Ash, how about the spreading this? It's often said that the kindest people have the fire assist anger. Samuel, without a second glance at the desperately apologizing duo, went on to make his report. Ignoring their pleas, Samuel called the authorities. In the end, both were arrested. They eventually faced prison time. Samuel and his wife divorced, and the compensation from the divorce settlement offset any other financial matters. They agreed to have no future interactions. Charlotte was left without any defenses, reduced to just tears. They tried to benefit by deceiving others and falsely accusing them. It was indeed a case of facing the consequences of their own actions. Regretting now is too late, but hopefully they would change for the better. After the divorce, Samuel seemed to have regained his old spirit. Ever since getting married, Samuel and I have been enjoying online gaming, something he had set aside for a while. After the whole divorce debacle with Charlotte, Samuel moved out of the room they shared and started anew in a different place, trying to shift his feelings and begin a fresh chapter. For a while, he seemed to have lost trust in people and kept his distance, but lately, I've noticed he's been slowly venturing out for meals with friends. Once Samuel feels a bit more settled, I'm thinking of introducing him to some of my trustworthy friends. More than anything, after all the hurt he's been through, I want Samuel to find happiness.